Command line tools usually suck when it comes to interactivity, but it doesn't have to be like that. In this bite-sized tutorial, we will learn how to add interactivity to a Python CLI in just a few lines. Let's code! Hi, I'm Rafael, and this is Coder Cave. If you are interested in software development, you should subscribe to this channel. In this tutorial, we are going to use Questionary for Python to add some level of interactivity to a command line interface tool. This is very useful for a quick and dirty tool that you really want to share with your team, but you don't have the time to document in depth. In the first part, we are going to hard code a few selects. These are single choice options, and they are the equivalent of radio buttons in the web world. In the second part, we are going to load a few checkboxes from file. Checkboxes are multiple choice options, and uh, they are the equivalent of checkboxes in the web world. And in the third part, we are going to combine those two functions to create the framework for a nonlinear adventure book. Let's get started. As a first step, as usually, I will create a virtual environment. Once this is done, I will activate it. Now that uh, the environment is activated, I will install Questionary. All right, so now we are ready to move to uh, the code editor. So doing a simple um, single select, uh, single option choice is uh, very simple. So the only thing uh, we need is to define a questionary question. In this case, it's going to be a select. So the first parameter is going to be a message. So let's say we are creating a console application to create TPS reports. So um, let's say we need to pick who is the owner of the TPS report. And uh, possible owners will be, I don't know, uh, Bill Lumberg. Then we have Peter Gibbons and Michael and uh, Samir. All right, so with this, then we need to ask the question. And the result of this selection will be stored in, uh, in a field. So I will say, okay, uh, let's give me, give me the owner. All right, so once I get here, I also want to prompt the owner. So print owner. Okay, so with that, we can go back to the command line interface and call this. So right away, we have a list of options. And uh, we can use the arrows of the keyboard to select which option to pick. So let's say I want Michael. I select that and then it's uh, printing uh, Michael to the output. After seeing this very simple case, let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. We are going to load a file with configuration and then we are going to populate the select and a multiple choice. I already created a little bit of code here. Um, one method to load a configuration file. Now the configuration file is a very simple uh, YAML file with uh, owners as we saw in the previous demo. And then there will be a, a one additional field. This is, a, this is going to be our multiple choice field for uh, procedures. Things don't really need to make sense. It's just for a demonstration purpose. So in the prompt, uh, here we load the configuration. And uh, the first thing we are going to do, uh, we are going to replace the owner part. Okay, so here we should have the owner. Let's verify that everything works. Oh, of course, I need to call um, ask. Otherwise, it's not going to really ask the question. Let's move back. And here the selection works as it was working before. Now we move on to the multiple choice option. And this is very simple. So uh, we called this part uh, procedures. So we're going to give a 
name uh, procedures to the recipient so to the receiving variable and uh, the method here is going to be checkbox uh, procedures and uh, here we are going to list the those procedures over here and as before ask okay let's print the procedures just to verify that everything works let's move back to the command line interface so the first question will be who is the owner owner this time is samir and then what's the procedure and here again we can use the arrow keys to move and uh, with the space bar we can select which procedures we want to pick and when we select something when we press enter we obtain a list of options now the objects in this list will be composed by strings so this is a bit of a problem when uh, coding the interaction uh, so it will feel a bit unnatural to have to test for uh, for strings in uh, our code uh, but this is uh, how we interact or this is how we do a multiple selection over here in uh, questionary let's try to combine those things to create a non-linear adventure book so here i created a book yaml this is uh, um, configuring our uh, story so let's imagine that we are uh, peter gibbons the protagonist of office space uh, and uh, you are playing your role playing this character so you will start with some equipment. Uh, you just have a fishing rod, it's very useful. Uh, here is where we see how the interactivity can uh, really be useful. In the file, we define chapters. So chapters have a, an integer identifier, which is going to help us navigate through the chapters. So we start by default on chapter one. It has a title, a text, and then there will be a challenge. So the challenge is going to be the content of a select or a checkbox method in a questionnaire and then let's say we have a uh, single choice um, challenge uh, we will prompt uh, options and only one of those can be selected and uh, uh, depending on the selection we will navigate to chapter two or chapter three chapter three has not even been completed uh, all right so this is an example of a uh, choice that leads to a new chapter in uh, chapter two we have items so it will be possible to uh, pick uh, a tps cover sheet or a, a new memo in case we forgot the code very simple so uh, this uh, small method here is just loading the book that's uh, just a yaml uh, config file so we end up with a dictionary over here um, when uh, we uh, enter this um, this code we are going to play at chapter one play is uh, the main method of everything and accepts a chapter index so chapter one obviously is going to be this chapter here uh, and it has a choice so we first just prompt the title we prompt the text and then if we have a choice of chapters we are going to um, find uh, our list of uh, choices with this uh, uh, list comprehension and then we are going to construct this questionnaire select by using the challenge as a text and then the choices that we extracted uh, at line 19 and then we ask the question and then depending on the choice we have to find out which is the next chapter so the next chapter from the configuration comes from um, the next uh, attribute of the selection so based on the text remember that questionnaire is going to return you the string representation of your option we use this uh, lambda uh, in a filter so we create a filter uh, using a lambda so the lambda is uh, testing the the content of the text and uh, once the filter is returned we just call next there should only be one uh, available value and of that value uh, the value is going to be something like this we want the next property which is this one and based on that we can call play on the chapter where we are supposed to end 
So for this very simple one, only chapter one uh, to two are going to work. So let's move on to our command line interface. It's called quest. All right, so here we have the possible selection. We can look down or we can take the back door. So we take the back door and this leads to chapter two. So here you see we can pick items. So over here I can pick the TPS cover sheet and Lumberg memo. And the prompt here is going to, or the, the print is going to tell us that we picked those two items. If you need to handle the command line arguments with Python, check my tutorial about Python click. And if you haven't done it yet, hit subscribe. So that's it. Just those few lines of code and you add a lot more interactivity to your command line interfaces built with Python.